Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, go watch part 1, it will be linked in the description. Today I'll be revisiting Gushing Over Magic Girls. Now originally I made part 1, I intended to only review 10 episodes, mainly because I didn't know how many would be made. However, I then pushed back the schedule by 2 weeks, this let me review 2 more episodes. But the series has 13, not 12, and that bugs me, because I never covered the last episode. So. Here's an in-depth review of episode 13. Episode 13 starts with Otama and the rest of Imor Mina changing into swimming clothes. They're going to the beach. A pretty fitting ending for the final episode, one must think. Everyone is ready for vacation. Kiwi forces Yutena to wear the most revealing swimsuit possible. She then changes out of it very clearly, then opts for a normal one. They walk to the beach, and the Tresmachia are living their normal lives there, so they're not actually fighting. Kiwi, Karuko, rivalry still appears to be going strong. Of course, Sue builds a sand castle, and Nemo and Matama are fighting over the pool donut because Matama cannot swim. A very normal scene happens with Yutena rubbing sunscreen on herself with Seo. Yutena goes and acts like a meth addict, but instead of meth, it's the Tres Magia. They all have a fun time swimming and playing. Yutena goes to the beach bar, and Yutena is first in line. However, some drunk woman come up and cut her in line. Whatever you call the people working those places, says the Yutena was first. It then cuts to Kiwi in what can only be described as a blackface while she is holding a dual barrel pistol. The Tres Magia get ready for combat. Kiwi throws a smoke bomb and it gives time for Enormita to transform. The Tres Magia go for a forward attack, but Enormita splits up, leaving Bazer in the center. She whips the octopus that was on Kiwi, and the Tres Magia gets stuck into Octopus's arms. Uh, yeah, this is the most Japanese thing to ever exist, and uh, yeah, weirdly everyone is stuck in it. Baze realizes she cannot control it. Yeah, this thing is just fucked. I mean, quite literally. Azul freezes the octopus and then it turns into shards. And then for some reason, it's just Azul staring at Baze. The theme song starts playing and then is interrupted promptly by Korosu's doll picking up the bodies. It continues. The scene shows Azul transforming completely and Baze, of course, enjoying it. Azul transforms into her La Vidia, which is Magia Azura of Horror Forest Maiden. The theme song now plays at full volume and has 20 seconds of this. Baser tries to fight her, however Azul moves her attack to crush it in her hand. Azul talks about how she will never break. Baser keeps trying, Azul keeps fighting back. Sofer explains how the power is really just hidden masochistic pleasure. Sofer explains how it's just two perverts fighting in the middle of the fucking afternoon. Everyone at once attacks Azul and Sofer's theory was proven right. Azul fights back. Normita goes flying away, Azul's power then fade away, everyone's back to normal, it's nighttime on the beach and everyone's relaxing, it ends with Koroku and Kiwi fighting with sparklers, well, technically, it ends with hinting of season 2, um, yeah, now, I've reviewed all 13 episodes now, and I can safely say that this series is fucked, I mean, episode 13, unlike most episodes, does not follow the chronological order of the manga, this was supposed to be the hotel chapter if I'm not wrong. Comment if you want a point five where I review the manga of this anime. Uh, next video is Cursed Anime Review Episode 3. I will talk about an old anime, Heaven's Lost Property. See you then. That will be in about a week.